So, what's the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament? Oh, I'm glad you asked, Spanky. I'll tell you about it right now. So if you look back behind me here, we see um, a draft of the tournament brackets. The tournament is a tournament that um, these that I constructed for these real people cards here to play and entertain me. So um, if you look here, it's it's in two main brackets. We have the alpha bracket, which is all of this stuff over here, and the omega bracket, which is all this stuff over here. Um, the brackets are const constantly subject to change. There's some of the um, smaller rules of the tournament, and that's okay because it's just cards playing. So the cards have um, personalities, and there's uh, I won't go too much into the cards, but they have personalities and they have characters, and they play the different sides of the given game, and then how well they do depends on how, uh, determines how they advance. So if you look over here, we have um, six main legs of each of the two brackets. So the first leg here would be the Protestant leg, the Ottoman Empire leg, the France leg, the Pope leg, the Habsburg leg, and the England leg of the alpha bracket. On the other side we have the Fioli Kateni leg, the Zytal Zytal leg, the Human Trill leg, the Venom Venom leg, the Bralti Bralti leg, and the Ru Pasha leg on um, the Omega bracket. Now these words some of you may recognize from a particular game and that's this game here. Um, so in the alpha leg culminates with Here I Stand and the Omega leg culminates with Time Agent. Um, I, I'm planning on adding another game actually after Here I Stand. Uh, so that's what they are. That's what it means. So the person who wins Battlestar Galactica, for example, gets to be the French in Here I Stand. The person who wins uh, Kronos and then a combination game of Chrononauts and U.S. Patent Number 1 gets to be the Zytal in both Throne World and Time Agent. Pretty simple. Um, and then the people who win those games get to be in a special gaming event, which is the finals. So we have the kind of qualifying rounds, I guess. The semifinals, which is these two large six-player games, and then the finals in the middle. Now we also have a loser bracket down here, and I will lower the camera a little bit. See that down there? Um, so the people who lose the game are not quite out of it yet, who have lost their games. Um, so people who lose are going to play a game of outdoor survival. Now if they are able to survive that game of outdoor survival, then they will they will be able to be in this massive game of careers. Well, possibly massive. It could be very small if no one um, survives. If no one survives, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'll have to come up with a new game to feed into the English and the Pasha. So anyway, the careers game, the person who wins that gets to be England and here I stand. Now there's also another route out of careers. If you take a career in space, you're going to get blasted into a space game. On here it says space alert. It won't actually be space alert because I don't really want to play that solitaire um, a number of times. It'll be some other space game. Now that space game is going to be do or die. If you die in that space game, you're dead. You're out of it. I'm not going to rip up their cards, but they're out of the tournament for good for good. Um, and so it's kind of a, a you know, got to really blast off and see if you can get to the moon if you take the space route. Um, so you essentially, getting a career in space takes you out of careers entirely. Um, and then if you win that, you get to be the Pasha and Rue in Time Agent and Throne World, respectively, or the other way around. So that's the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. It's not that complicated. Um, some of the games I combine. So, for example, I've already done Conquest of Planet Earth, the Space Alien Game, and Gehios. I combine them into one game very simply. Um, that seemed to work pretty well. I'm going to do that in a couple of other places. Um, and then games feed into other games differently. So Kronos, for example, that just decides the starting cash in the combination game of US Patent Number 1 and Chrononauts. And so there's that. And then occasionally I have to add in other games to, to decide tiebreakers. So Duel of Ages, for example, wasn't originally in the, the tournament, but I needed it for a tiebreaker. Um, I haven't done this yet, but after Betrayal at the House on the Hill, there's a tiebreaker I need, and so Fearsome Floors is going to come into play for that. So this isn't the entire tournament, but this is a good approximation of what it was at one time. Um, and I've been, for the most part, sticking to this. There you go. There's your answer. Um, I lost the card that I was talking to.
Well, there's your answer.